welcome back and welcome if you're new. Today on the channel we're going to be making some DIY window boxes for the front of our house and you guys know I love flowers, I love landscaping and gardening and I thought this would be a really fun project to tackle this summer. The front of our home is pretty flat. We have sort of three sides of brick and the very front facing part of our home it's just a flat two-story, two-window surface. And I thought some window boxes would add a ton of charm and just sort of give the house some dimension. I also thought it would add just some pretty wood accent to our house as well. It's really gonna pop against the white brick. Um, but I've actually already completed this project with Caleb. I'm sort of filming in the future, if you will. Uh, so I'm gonna insert all the footage of us making the boxes, kind of talking through it, what stain color I picked, all that good stuff stuff and then today now that I'm done with them we're actually going to do the fun part which is head to the garden center pick out some flowers and plant the boxes together so if you're excited about this be sure to give it a big thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started okay so we're about to do the second window box and before Caleb gets started I wanted him to just kind of like break down everything he used um, I figured he would be a lot better at explaining it than I would so Perfect. Yeah, this is um, all, again, just kind of taken from another video that I watched for inspiration, but these are 1x8 pine boards. The guy in the video did 1x12s, but he had really big windows, um, and so I thought 1x8 by by eight would be the perfect size for kind of like, you know, flower box. Um, so 1x8, and then these are all just, you know, cut to size. Um, for the different screws, this is like a one and a half inch screw, which is again going to allow us to. And they're deck know, screws. Yeah, just deck screws, so they're you know you can for punch outside. them in. Yeah, for outside, so you can do that. And then when we go lengthwise too, um, this longer screw, I think this is a two and a half inch screw, so this guy can you know come like that and yeah, tie I gotcha. together. Um, this I just use for you know straight lines basically for my cuts. So now that you know basically what you need for this project, Caleb is starting by pre-drilling holes and then he's going to go back in with those one and a half inch um, deck screws and he's going to screw together the one by eight pine boards. Summer is the perfect time of year to get projects like this done around the house when you want to be outside and you want to work on the outside of your home. And this is a project that I was so excited to tackle. And I wanted to let you guys know that the reason we opted to screw together two one inch boards versus using thicker wood was simply for the fact that it's going to make for a sturdier box and it's going to prevent cracking and warping and the wood long term getting all funky. So we we really liked this method and it just really ended up working out for us. Now that the front and back are done, you want to square up your sides using a speed square. Super simple tool, very effective at making sure that your sides are perfectly lined up and square. And once you're able to do that, you can use your three inch deck screws to screw your sides in place. And yes, it really is that simple. This would be an awesome first DIY project if you're newer to DIYing and you maybe want to pick up a couple of new tools for your repertoire, but I encourage you to just take your time, take it step by step. This was something that was new to us. We are definitely not experts or professionals, um, but we just kind of learn as we go and figure it out along the way. And that is the best way to learn how to use tools and how to tackle projects just like this. 
And now you can see in this clip, he's doing the exact same thing. He's just putting the bottom piece in and screwing them with the three inch screws, making sure not to hit any of the screws that he already put in. That was a little tricky, but just take your time and you'll figure it out. Um, but once he was able to do that, now I sped this way up and wanted to show you guys that he is using his drill just to put holes in the very bottom of the window box. You definitely want to do this to ensure proper drainage. You don't want your box to get rotted. You don't want your plants to die or your flowers to die. Make sure you put adequate drainage just by drilling some holes and you will be good to go. Caleb decided to wait to put the front of the box on until after it was already hung. This made hanging it a lot easier. He didn't have to use weird angles and it made the box lighter while he hung it but we have a little bit of a trickier situation hanging because our home is brick. So he had to use a hammer drill, which is basically a super heavy duty drill that drills into concrete. And he was able to pre-drill with that. He used Capcons, which are just concrete anchors and did plenty of them just to ensure that the boxes were nice and secure. They're not going anywhere they are screwed right into that brick so hopefully they stay nice and sturdy hanging it was a little bit tricky but it wasn't too bad i just held up one side while he did the other and then once one of those anchors were in place it was pretty easy to hold it was just a matter of um, taking his time getting the rest of them in so definitely was a little bit intimidating at first but once he got the hang of it it was smooth sailing And now you can see here he is drilling the front of the box on again pre-drilling some holes and then going back in with screws and this part was really easy and it looks so good already but it's about to get even better because he went back and just measured each side and was able to um, cut his one by two pine boards to size and just add some really simple simple trim pieces these were not extravagant these were not ornate by any means um, they weren't even necessarily decorative but I just figured simpler was better we didn't want to be frustrated with corners and dealing with all of that um, so I just had him cut the one by twos to size and just kind of shape out the box, give it a little more dimension. And honestly, I think this in total for him to do the trim on the box maybe took five minutes. It did not take long at all. It was just a matter of measuring each side and cutting those smaller boards to size. And this is what the box looks like once it was all built. It turned out so good. And then poor Caleb had to do the exact same thing on our second story. He is so gracious to <laughs> attempt this for me and it actually turned out really good. He was able to hold it up and do it completely by himself. I just kind of stood back and eyeballed it from the ground level and it turned out great. But now I finally get to stain the boards. This is where the video gets fun. I ended up picking the color Provincial by Minwax and this is just a really pretty sort of deep walnut i would say it's like a darker than special walnut if you've ever used that color before um, it is beautiful i really liked it and the method i used was just to go in with a paintbrush um, or stain brush i should say and that way i was sure to get all of the little nooks and crannies since there were multiple boards with crack not cracks but lines there you can see so i went ahead and used the paintbrush and brushed it right on and then 
although it said to wait 10 to 15 minutes to wipe off, I always wipe off right away. I don't know if anybody else is like this. I didn't want it too, too dark, and just by doing that, it turned out great. So I'm really pleased with the color. I just did one coat of that on the entire box, wiped it away right away with a rag, and I love the result. If you follow me over on Instagram, I did a poll before tackling this project and asked you guys if I should paint the window boxes or stain them. And I think roughly 80% of you said to stain them. And that was the way I was already leaning, so that definitely confirmed it for me. It's funny because when I look at photos of homes with window boxes, I was definitely drawn to more classic looks with painted window boxes. Um, I thought that the stained boxes were a little bit too sort of modern farmhouse or that farmhouse look. Uh, however, I am so happy with this choice. I think it was the right choice for our home. I think with the white brick color, this just really warms up the house. It's amazing how something so simple can make such a big impact and create such instant charm. It's it's kind of crazy, but anyway, all that to say, I was back and forth, back and forth, and I'm very happy that we decided to stain them. It is so bright. The sun is going down like right on my face. Um, but I just finished staining. They look so good. I'm so happy with the color. Uh, now I have to wait about an hour and then I'm going to do the top coat on it so it's nice and sealed from all the elements and the heat and the rain and the cold. I want these to last. So I'll show you guys what I'm gonna use here. But for now, let's let them dry and I will come back when I'm ready to put it on. So I decided to use this transparent one coat exterior stain and sealer all in one, which at first I didn't realize it was a stain. <laughs> I don't know, I saw the transparent and I just, I wasn't really paying attention if I'm totally honest. So when I opened the can and saw the orange, I was a little bit nervous, um, but truth be told, you could not see any color um, come across when I put it on this uh, dark stain, it really didn't make much of a difference at all. This was a transparent, just flat sealant. This is gonna make sure that um, none of the elements, the rain, the weather, the winters here in Ohio um, will impact these boxes for at least a couple of years, I'm hoping. I really hope these boxes last. Um, of course, year to year, I will be sure to update you guys, um, but I'm doing my best. I waited two hours to put this on. I let the stain dry. It was almost 100 degrees when I was doing this, so it dried pretty darn fast. Um, and then I ended up doing two coats of this top coat. So just wanted to clarify that there um, in case you try this at home. I figured two coats would just ensure that much more uh, security and coverage um, from everything that these boxes will see. So uh, all that to say, it was a little bit of a tedious process. It took a while, but we got it done. And this project in total took us three days, but really, I mean, we just did a couple hours here and there, 
um, with kids and everything, projects always take longer than we think they will. But if you had an entire day just kind of dedicated to this, you could definitely do this in an afternoon or um, in a day. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. That's why you'll see multiple outfit changes. Um, it just took us a couple of days to get it done. Okay, friends, we're here at the garden center now. I'm getting ready to get out. Um, I am a little bit nervous because it's so late in the season. It's the end of June. So I'm guessing my pick of flowers is not going to be massive, but we're just going to make it work and I'm sure we will find something beautiful. Good helper, dude. <laughs> We're gonna do two of the coleus. Here, buddy, you wanna put this one on the cart too? Good job. And here's the part we've all been waiting for. I finally get to plant up these window boxes and I am so excited. I'm starting out by covering the drainage holes with coffee filters. I saw Laura from Garden Answer do this and I thought it was such a good idea. She also has a white house and that way when you water, uh, none of the dirt just kind of sprinkles through the holes onto the house and splatters everywhere. So we'll see if this works. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and of course put in my soil. I think I'm just using some miracle Grow moisture control soil. I think it's organic. Um, nothing too fancy here, but I wanted to get that nice and full and then I'm going to mix in some slow release fertilizer. That way my flowers can be sure to be fed all season long. I'm just going to mix that into the boxes really well and then we can add our flowers. First on the list is Kiwi Fern Coleus. This has such a cool texture. This is going to bring a lot to this window box. I will say I end up changing up a couple of things. I'm gonna show you here in a couple minutes. So just kind of bear with me as I'm adding things. I'll try to explain as I go, but we will walk through everything at the end. And some more Coleus, this is called Alabama. And I loved the colors in this, I thought it was really really pretty that chartreuse green and the deep sort of burgundy red i thought that was really cool pay no attention to my back sweat that is so gross um but now i'm adding some classic white begonias and this box gets part shade to almost full shade um we're gonna see it's gonna be a trial and error of what ends up working in here but uh, i thought some begonias would be a perfect addition as a filler plant And next on the list, another part shade loving plant, Lobelia. Um, this is Bella Azure. I don't know, I guess that's the name of it. I always just referred to it as purple Lobelia. So um, if you haven't tried this plant in an arrangement, in a container, in a window box, it is stunning. It adds just sort of a cool depth to any arrangement. 
I think the purple is so beautiful. And then I'm also adding some Sun Divas. I found these and I love sort of that fanned look. They add a really cool element to this box. I'm doing two of these and then three of those um, Lobelias and those are the front sort of of the box there. But the last thing that I'm gonna add once I make sure all the dirt is covering every single root ball is some Creeping Jenny. And I love Creeping Jenny. It is such a fun, funky spiller plant to any container or box. Um, this guy here is just beautiful. I love that green chartreuse. And it's still a baby when I plant it. I can't wait to show you guys in a few weeks. Um, be on the lookout. I'm going to do um, a full, I think, garden tour probably in July when all my hydrangeas start to bloom. But um, I can't wait to see this box fill out. And that Creeping Jenny is just going to just beautifully cascade over the box and be stunning all season long. And just for fun, here is one last look at the before shot before we got started. And here is the after. I love this transformation. It is so fun. I love the warmth, the depth, and the color that this brings to the front of our home. And I am so, so thankful that this project went well and it turned out better than we could have hoped. It's later on in the day and I wanted to give you a quick sort of synopsis and tour of this window box because I ended up changing a couple of things after I filmed. So um, here's the box. I love all the color but I love that the blue hues of the Lobelia sort of give a cooling effect. Everything I have in this bed are going to be, these are um, Bobo Hydrangea so they are white. There's not a lot of color on the front of the house, so this really adds a statement. Um, but let me go ahead and remind you of what's all in here. So I have the purplish blue lobelia. This is such a pretty flower, pardon the road noise. Um, I did three of those in here. And then these are sun divas, and they had just a pretty pop of white they really fill this box nicely so i did two of those so i have three of the lobelia two of the sun divas and then on the ends i tucked in some creeping jenny and if you're not familiar with creeping jenny it will continue to trail way down it'll be such a pretty spiller and i did three of those as well so one there and then one there so that was kind of the front layer I just talked about. Now in the back here, I have white classic begonias. I did three, four of them. So I have one there, one tucked in, a couple of them tucked in here and here, and then another one on the end. Um, we'll see if <laughs> they don't get sort of overshadowed by the Alabama coleus. This stuff is gonna grow out and get massive so we will just see how that all plays out here in the next few weeks i figured since it was later in the season i could get away with packing more in here but this alabama coleus is so pretty i love the variegation adding the pop of red and the chartreuse green i think is so much fun this is another variety of coleus it's just a little bit smaller and then i have the kiwi coleus isn't that a fun name and i loved just kind of the shape and texture of these leaves. I think they're really cool. Adds so much depth and I'm excited to watch that grow. So I just did three of those and then ended up doing two of the kiwi um, coleus. So that's what I ended up changing. I had three of these and two of these and then I ended up flip-flopping it just because these weren't 
um, full enough to just kind of be my main thriller. So you can kind of see everything all backed up. I did tuck another coleus in here. And uh, I think this is a really, really pretty arrangement. And also here is a little bird's eye view of the top window box on the second story. I used all the same plants, just less of them. And you can see down below the bottom box. Well, friends, I am super happy with how the window boxes turned out. I'm so glad we opted to do the first and second story as much of a hassle as it was it just turned out beautiful i could not be happier with how the front of our house looks now and if you happen to like today's video be sure to give it a big thumbs up and maybe share it with a friend or a loved one that really helps my channel out and i will see you guys really soon in the next one bye